This is David Osteen, pastor of Hope Bible Church in Locust Grove, Georgia. And I want to deal with a question I received concerning the issue of the proper role of women in the church. Are they to keep silence in the church? Paul said in 1 Timothy 2.11, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. So what did he mean by that? Uh, well, he didn't say speechless. He didn't say a woman couldn't say anything in the church. Uh, but he had something in mind, obviously, in the context, and we'll look at the context of this in just a moment. We'll also look at 1 Corinthians 14. Now, let me start out by saying that the Apostle Paul has been accused of being anti-woman and chauvinist uh, because of some of the things he said about the role of women in the home and in the church. But, you know, number one, Paul wrote the Word of God. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, 2 Timothy 3.16. Uh, Romans through Philemon, the 13 epistles of the Apostle Paul, are actually the words of Christ, 1 Timothy 6, verse 3. Paul said the things he wrote are the wholesome words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul wasn't writing of his own mind and his own will. He was writing the Word of God in his epistles that are in the Word of God. And so to say, well, I don't like what Paul had to say about this is really to say you don't like what God said about it. Because Paul didn't write his opinion. He wrote the Word of God. The Bible is our authority. doesn't matter what we think or feel, what our opinion is. All that matters is what saith the Scripture. And then another thing is the carnal mind cannot understand the spiritual truth of the Word of God. Um, you come to an issue like this where Paul taught by inspiration of God that women are to be in submission to their husbands, how that the man is the head of the, the woman, and that women are to be uh, silent in the church, these type of things, and the carnal mind gets all upset and uh, because the carnal mind is self-centered and full of pride. But you need to understand that submission is a spiritual thing. And um, in the context of being filled with the Spirit in Ephesians 5, Paul said, submitting ourselves one to another in the fear of God. And uh, so submission does not equate to inferiority. Uh, for an example, the Lord Jesus submitted to his Father's will, and yet he is co-equal with the Father and with the Spirit in the Godhead. Not only that, while he was on earth, the Lord Jesus, uh, growing up, it says in Luke chapter 2, in verse number uh, 51, that he was in subjection uh, to, his, uh, to, to Mary and to uh, Joseph. How about that? Obviously, he's God manifest in the flesh. But there's an there he you know he's the Lord and he followed his own order that he gave in regard to the home and so forth. So, um, you know, God is a God of order. And First Corinthians eleven, and I'm not going to go to that passage for sake of time. I may do this in my next video. I'm going to deal with the question of head coverings on women. But in First Corinthians eleven, in that passage uh, where it mentions head coverings, it talks about how the man is the head of the woman. Uh, that's the order of things. And the order in the church reflects the order in the home. God's not going to have one order in the home and then a whole different order in the church. First Timothy 2 teaches that men are to be spiritual leaders and women are to be submissive followers. It's, uh, there are serious consequences to getting out of God's divine order. Uh, ask Adam. You go back to the fall. You know, the serpent came to the woman. Why didn't he come to the man? Well, he approached the woman and said, Yea, hath God said. The woman should have went immediately to Adam, but instead she dialogued with the devil, took matters in her own hands. Things got out of order. The woman usurped authority that did not belong to her. Adam neglected the authority that did belong to him, and that brought about the fall of man. And so the devil always attacks God's order. God's order is very important. I mean, he, I think he knows what he's doing. I think God puts things in a certain order for a reason. And the, the, the design of, the, of, the, of marriage and of, of the home and of the church, it's, it's wonderful when, when, it's according to, when things go according to God's plan. He knows what he's talking about. So, but you know, uh, the woman's always going to be tempted to usurp authority that does not belong to her, and the man's always going to be tempted to neglect the authority that does belong to him. And just because a man is neglecting authority and is not stepping up and leading does not give a woman the right to fill the gap. Um, we need to follow God's word. 
Um, you know, Paul taught that we are one body in Christ. There's neither male nor female as, t- as far as our spiritual standing. That's what he said in Galatians 3. Uh, in the one body, there's neither Jew nor Greek. He said neither man nor female. Well, he's talking about our spiritual standing, but that doesn't mean that on earth there's no distinction because in the book of Ephesians, for an example, which is all about the one body of Christ, he tells women to submit to their husbands, to obey their husbands. Uh, he tells children to obey their parents. He even tells servants to obey their masters. There's still distinction on earth. Um, so our spiritual standing is, it, yes, praise the Lord, that's true. But you need to rightly divide standing and state. There's still an order of things uh, while we're on earth as far as the way God set things up to go. All right? So, um, you know, look, obviously women have a vital role and in the home and in the church, very important. And if they leave off their God-given role, then it's going to cause a problem. And let me say this, everywhere Christianity is gone, it has helped women, not hurt women. Uh, I don't understand why, you know, women want to get knocked off the pedestal, so to speak, that God put them on. They, you know, God has a wonderful order of things, and uh, but the devil comes along and says, oh, I got a better idea. And it's amazing how people listen to that. And, um, but... Women have a vital role, a very important role in the home and in the church. And uh, this video is in particular about the the church. So uh, Philippians chapter uh, 4, Philippians chapter 4, for an example, Paul acknowledged uh, the role of women in the ministry. Philippians 4, 3, I I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel. And uh, for an example, you go to Romans 16 and all the saints that he mentions who were uh, helping him in the ministry and so forth. And uh, there's a lot of uh, there's there's a lot of women mentioned in Romans 16 as you go through that chapter. So uh, Paul knew that women had a, a vital role. Uh, yet uh, you, we got to follow God's God's order. So the way things are in the Word of God, Paul's very clear on this. You know, obviously. A Christian woman needs to share the gospel with those she has the opportunity to and to talk to others about the Word of God, as in, you know, personal work, talking to people one-on-one and so forth. Obviously, she can teach her children. Obviously, she can teach other children. She can teach other women. Titus chapter 2 talks about the aged women teaching the younger women certain things. And so uh, she can be involved in teaching but she's not to teach a man as in usurping authority over the man. Now, look at what look at what the word of God says in 1 Timothy chapter 2. It's very plain. Verse 8, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. So there to be the spiritual leaders. He's talking about in the context of the local church here, in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Not saying she can't wear jewelry or whatever. It's saying she shouldn't be known for that. She should be known for her good works. Verse ten, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. In other words, she needs to ord- she needs to focus on adorning herself in godliness. Um, and he says, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man. To usurp is to take what is not rightfully yours. And she, God did not give her authority over the man. He said, don't do that, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed in Eve. There's an order for a reason. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. The way women are designed, they're more emotional uh, by nature, the way God set it up, and they're more prone to uh, deception. Now, men get deceived too, obviously, but the woman is the weaker vessel, Peter said by inspiration of God, and Adam was not deceived. He willfully disobeyed God, but the woman was deceived. And, um, and by the way, verse 15 about being saved in childbearing, I actually have a video on this in this Q&A series where I, I deal with that verse. So that's not my point. I'm already running out of time here. So in the context of teaching men, 
uh, a woman is not to usurp that authority. She's not to be teaching men. That's what the Word of God says. Well, somebody says, I just don't feel like, I, it doesn't matter what you feel like. The Bible's the authority. And, you know, there are preachers that they come to this question and they, and they're, they water it down and they're so apologetic, it seems. Look, the Bible's the Bible. It says what it says. I'm not going to apologize for it. It's what it says. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 34. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it's not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. So there are applications of the moral principles on, in the law that still apply today. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. Yeah, good luck with that today. For it is a shame for a woman to speak in the church. What? Came the word of God out from you or came it unto you only? If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge the things that are right on you are the commandments of the Lord. If any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. All right, now. Paul's writing the commandments of the Lord here. So here it says they can't even speak. But in the context, he's talking about speaking with an unknown tongue. And tongues have ceased, and I cover that in another video. But he gives rules when tongues were in use in the Acts period. A woman couldn't speak with tongues in the church. So he's not just talking about speaking in general, but speaking in tongues. Okay, so when it comes to those spiritual gifts, when it comes to teaching, in other words, leadership in the local church, that's not their role. A bishop, there's two offices in the local church, bishop and deacon. Okay, look at the qualifications for both bishop and deacon. It says husband of one wife. Okay, there are no such thing, there's no such thing as a woman pastor or deacon. Okay, so there are no women preachers as far as uh, in leadership, as far as God is concerned. God did not, that's not God's will. Again, a woman uh, can teach her children. She can teach other children. She can teach other women. There's, a, there, there's a, a place for service there. She needs to be a faithful witness, share the gospel with others, all of that. But this, this thing of taking authority in the church, that's out of God's order, and it'll bring a mess and by the way, church at Corinth, what a mess it was. And part of the problem, they had many problems. One of them was the women were out of order. That's what he's dealing with in 1 Corinthians 11. He mentions it again here in 1 Corinthians 14. So the Bible says what it says. And I make no apology for it. I'm just telling you what the scripture says. You can believe it or not. But it's not the teaching of Paul. It's the teaching of Christ through Paul. It's the word of God for this present age of grace. He wrote to the churches and gave the proper order of the church. You know... In our country today, things are so messed up and out of order. And, 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 and look what's going on. What a mess. I mean, if we'd follow the Word of God, it'd be so much better in the home and in the church. And God lays things out the way He does for good reason. And we need to trust Him and follow His Word. And uh, there's much more I'd like to say, but uh, the time's already up. So if you have a question... Just leave a comment or send me an email at hopebiblechurchga at att.net. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching.